So the online book community is currently experiencing the rise of what I would argue is the most instantly popular new fantasy release of the past few years. And today we're going to find out if they're right. <laughs> So this is Fourth Wing. It's a new adult dragon-filled fantasy romance that's set in a military academy and follows this 20-year-old girl named Violet who's training to become a dragon rider. Which is a famously dangerous goal because unpaired dragons who meet humans that they deem unworthy will just kill them. So high stakes, and she's pursuing this goal around this guy named Zayden who is this dragon rider that is evil and her enemy and also sexy and probably her love interest. And really this book just seems to be her doing her best to survive and hang out with some dragons and get some ass and also investigate some secrets that she thinks the military is keeping from the public. And let me Tell you this has got everybody twisted. As of filming, this book has generated a 4.68 out of 5 on Goodreads with over 167,000 ratings, which for those of you who are unfamiliar is like an absolutely absurd average. Those are numbers that you really only see in later books of those like massively commercially successful YA fantasy series that just come out here and take the world by storm and generate rabid, uncritical fans who will go on to rate every single book that they read in the series five stars just because the series is that important to them. For an example of this effect, you can look at like any Sarah J Moss book, Kingdom of Ash, which is the seventh book in the Throne of Glass series has a Goodreads average of 4.64 over about 340,000 reviews. It is the highest rated book she has and that makes sense because let's be clear, like nobody who doesn't already really like that series is going to be reading seven books of it for fun, which really skews the data upwards and still Fourth Wing's Goodreads average as a book one is still higher than that. Like what? That's insane. What makes this even more impressive is that Rebecca, the author, is a relative unknown in the book talk space. She's written other books but only one of them, The Things We Leave Unfinished, has really made it onto social media at all and even then I would not consider it to be like truly viral. And you can really see that in the comparison that Fourth Wing, in the two months since it's been released into this world, already has over four times as many ratings as The Things We Leave Unfinished, which was previously Rebecca's most popular book by far. People are treating this like it's the second coming of Christ. It's like Rebecca invented dragons. I've seen videos on my For You page that are just pronunciation guides for this book, and they're getting like almost a hundred thousand likes. But anyways, what's really pushing me over the edge of finally taking a deeper look at this is the counterculture that's starting to form, composed of people who absolutely hate it. I am one of those cockroaches that just loves drama. I just love picking sides. I'm broken in that way. I swear to god negative reviews of popular books inspire me to read them more than all of the gushing combined. And I could not have given less of a fuck about this when it was like the unvarnished crown jewel of book talk. But now that people are coming for it, now that people are angry, woo, interesting, interesting, tell me more. So that's what we're doing today. I'm gonna read this book and spend part of this video vlogging my thoughts kind of as I go and then I'm going to give you my honest review of whether or not I think that this book was worth it. Everything will be completely spoiler free until partway through me giving my review at the end but I'm going to warn you about that so you can click off or whatever at that point if you really want to experience this like cultural moment for yourself. I would never take that away from you. Obligatory disclaimer before I start this. I'm not going into this book expecting it to be bad or good or anything. In fact I would like to love it. That would be really cool. I'm not looking to have hot takes. I'm just realistic that I'm honest and a bitch and I wanted to warn you before we really get into this video because the fans of this book already scare me. I have a lot of experience reading things that have been very hyped up and having complex feelings about them. And if that happens I'm going to share them all with you regardless of what they are. Once again maybe I think this is awesome. Maybe I think this is the best thing in the entire world. I just want you to know that I'm gonna keep it real with you either way, okay? Also, full disclosure, I was sent this book in the mail by the publisher ahead of its release, completely unsolicited. I did not ask for this. I am very privileged to have the opportunity to receive a decent amount of books in the mail, but I just don't have time to get to all of them, especially when I don't ask for them. And I opened this book up and I saw that the words on each page were in like 10 point font, and I just decided that I was not strong enough at that time to read this, so I never did. I'm really just telling you all of this because this book was initially sent to me in a box that also came with this sweatshirt which, don't get me wrong, I would rather be caught dead in a ditch than wear this in public. But, <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of silly, it's kind of fun, and I'm gonna be wearing it for today's video because I think it's kind of camp. Well, let's go. Okay, also real quick before I get started, I know that I say dragon with like a weird bootleg pronunciation. I've been getting flamed by my college friends in South Carolina about how I say that sound since before you could drive, okay? Let me cook.
All right, so I'm about 20% of the way through and I'm absolutely starving. So I'm going to cook myself some food and tell you a little bit about what's going on right now in the book. Kind of like an expanded premise. All right, so Violet makes it past this initial trial and into the Dragon Riding Academy. And apparently it's not only the dragons that she has to worry about because people inside of this academy can just kill each other at basically any time for any reason without any consequences at all. Which is kind of insane. And a lot of people hate her because her mom is just a super powerful general who has done a lot of awful shit in her time. So she's constantly under threat, which in all actuality, like if so many people want to kill her as we're told that they do and she's just out here fending off threats constantly at all hours of the day she would be dead already let's be honest with ourselves but you know i still appreciate the constant threat of danger even when it's a little bit imaginary like it's got some edge you know it's a fun time there's a sort of a love triangle brewing for sure her aforementioned sexy enemy zayden is a third year which is the highest that you can be and he's also the leader of like an entire division which is called a wing and she is of course in his wing the fourth wing that's where the title of this book comes from if you're curious but anyway violet's mom is the general that was directly responsible for the death of zayden's mother who is this big rebel leader in the uprising that Violet's mom quashed. And for some reason, after this uprising, the government was like, you know what we should do with all of the children of these people that we just executed because they were traitors? We should conscript them into our army and force them to become dragon riders. Which is a choice, you know? And anyway, Zayden is now in leadership. And now Zayden wants to take revenge on his dead mom through murdering Violet, but he also clearly has some kind of agenda that isn't murdering her, which I find compelling. That's fun. Like, I can smell the seats, you know? Like, you can't get anything past me. And it's been fun. We've already gotten, like, a knife against the throat scene. That was sauce. That was a good time. And let it be known, I do not trust any man who name starts with an X, but I just can't help myself. I'm intrigued so far, at least, with him. Meanwhile, the other love interest is her childhood bestie, whose name is Dane, and Dane is her squad leader. It was at this point that past me made the truly humiliating decision to turn on my air fryer, which made my audio sound like it was being recorded live from the seventh circle of hell. So I'm going to spare you that as a gift and summarize the rest of what I was saying. So Dane, Violet has had a crush on him canonically, apparently forever, and his primary personality trait is just really not wanting Violet to be at the Dragon Riding Academy. Like, he is like 100% sure that she's going to die. And you know, Violet is depicted as being chronically ill and super physically fragile, which honestly I can see how you'd be like, oh yeah, that girl who gets injured at like 10 times the rate of her peers and heals slower than all of them. Yeah, she's probably going to get killed for being weak in an academy where people are killed for being weak. I can understand the concern, especially coming from somebody who's repressed and probably in love with her. So it's reasonable and it's also very annoying. Like off the bat, Violet's really direct in telling him, no, I'm not going to leave. I'm staying. You have to trust me. He just loves not listening to her and not believing in her. And it just got very old for me very quickly. So at that point, let's just say that I was glad that Zayden was the man who was named on the back of the book. Plot-wise so far, I said that it was kind of giving a more twee, colorful version of the Military Academy arc from the Poppy War. It's very much like a Dauntless from Divergent and Harry Potter combo. Violet's kind of just going to classes and interacting with people and trying to figure out how to survive and also ascend above her competitors. And I could already see at this point why people might be critical of the book. The way that exposition is handled is that Violet used to want to be a historian, right? A scribe. And as a result of that, she finds historical facts to be comforting. So on like page 20, when she's going through this very terrifying initial trial where everybody expects her to die. She just starts like out loud verbally reciting seven paragraphs of relevant exposition and world building to make herself feel better as she's crossing this parapet, which is a bit heavy handed, you know? And also there's a bit of a mismatch between what is happening in the book events wise and how it's written. Theoretically, these people have been at war for over 600 years and it's a very bloody war and people are dying all of the time. And because of just the really intelligent, super cool way that the military runs its academies, only 25% of Violet's class is supposed to live to graduate, to even fight in the war, and it's stated that almost none of those people will live to retire. And in addition to that, all of the rebellion progeny like Zayden are actually just branded with a ton of different tattoos, so everybody can tell looking at them that they're rebellion children, and as a result of that, they're treated as second-class citizens by everybody at the academy. And I just felt that in a different book, this story might have been written with a much darker tone to actually match the quality of the events that are happening. But in this one, it's kind of just Violet's internal monologue, looking around thinking, wow, those guys are so hot, they're so sexy, I sure do want to prove myself which is just not going to be everybody's thing. But with that said, I was still having a good time with this, I was excited to continue, and it was at this point that my pork was done, and I could talk to you like a normal human being. So there you go. Also, it turns out that I'm really bad at cooking and filming this at the same time, so I need to finish making my salad, but then we're gonna keep going. Ahaha. Ah, Okay, this goes so hard. I feel like how men feel when they watch sports. Like, is my life meaningless if I don't have a dragon? This is better than I thought it would be by a factor of like 10. I'm just not as strong as other riders. I know exactly who and what you are, Violet Sword Gale. <laughs> She's so bad, dude. I love it. This is the forced proximity that girls want. Oh my god, it is. Ah! It's disgusting how much fun I'm having with this. Fuck it. I'm a book dragon. The sun is setting. This is so good. So I'm officially halfway through, just checking in. Current thoughts. Dane, smelly. Violet, bad as hell. Zayden, hot. 
hot. Just, just hot. I feel like this book has such a strong grasp on the concept that most women that I've actually met in the real world don't want a man who will just walk over them in the name of protecting them. Maybe that's just me, but I just really like how he encourages her to be competent. It's wonderful. Also, the dragons are now much more important to the story. That's cool. They have such fun personalities. Like, they are sassy and interesting, and I really like the political system that's kind of being teased that they have together. We're not seeing a ton of it. It mostly exists in the background, but I find it fascinating, just the dynamics between all of the dragons. And, okay, is Violet really horny? like all of the time. Yes, she is. But honestly, when you're a lady in this environment, like what are you expected to do, you know? I feel like I'm gonna end up saying this a few more times in this video, but is this book going to be winning any Hugo Awards? Absolutely not. Is this book winning my fanfiction Wattpad Loving Heart? Yes. Yes, it's fun. It is so much fun. I am screaming. The plot is moving swiftly along. It is eating. It is leaving no crumbs. And I initially planned to record half of this video today where I am right now. And then, you know, it's nine right now. The sun has set. My lighting is worse. And I'm canceling the plans I had to eat some ice cream and watch some movies in favor of eating some ice cream and reading more of this book, which I protect my peace. Okay. Like I don't fuck around. So that is truly really some high praise that I'm giving this book. So yeah, I'm going to keep going off to the races. The dragon threw the bond. In this economy, they forgot to shield. Oh no. This is such funny lore. Am I into it? <laughs> Damn it. Touching you is a bad idea. The worst. Kissing you would be a cataclysmic mistake. Calamitous. We'll both regret it. Naturally. Fuck it. The fuck it, that is one of my favorite things in romance. It's elite, you can't match it. This is an absolutely absurd scene, and yet... <laughs> so I have a little less than 100 pages left, and I would just so love to finish this tonight. But I am so sleepy. I'm so tired. I want to be able to enjoy the ending of this book. Recently, we've been veering into the romance really hard. Sometimes I love it. I still think Zayden as a character is very compelling, but it's also, who's gonna say it? It's, it's a little cringe sometimes. Some of the things they say, I'm just like, girl, what do you mean? But anyways, I'm gonna go to bed and then tomorrow we can unpack the end of this book together. Ha ha ha. Good morning. I'm really excited to finish this. I will say, I've slept on it, and maybe this is heretical, but I am liking the last third of this book less than the first big chunk, for sure. I just feel like the romance went very suddenly from, like, burning, you know? Like, what's gonna happen next? Ooh, tension. Up to, we are in love. Very quickly, and it's really emphasizing some of the more cringe parts of the book to me that are easier to ignore when there are other things that are going on. But with that said, I'm still having a great time reading this, for sure. Like, I think I'll rate it pretty highly. I still find the plot really fun. I love the dragon. And I do still like the two of them as a couple. I just wish it was a little different, you know? But more on that soon. We're not going to unpack that yet. We have to finish the book first. So yeah, let's find out how this ends. Why is this sad? <laughs> All right, so we have made it. I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts real quick with no spoilers before I really get into it after the cut. Overall, I liked this. I definitely can see why it's become so popular, but I also think that with that popularity has come this unfortunate generalization that this is a book for every single kind of reader. And that is just not true at all, in my opinion. And I think that it's leading to some people who are giving this book a shot, coming out of it, thinking, oh my God, book talk is so bad. This is awful. Miss me with this completely. All of the recommendations I get online are garbage. And honestly, I can see where they're coming from if they're not the right kind of reader for this book. Because let us be so clear, this is not a unique story. This is not a particularly complex world. It is very much like beginner fantasy. And I think that that's great for anybody who's trying to bridge into the genre, especially if they're coming from being a romance reader. But there is just nothing super distinctive about this story. It's kind of like a patchwork quilt of a bunch of popular books and themes. And if you're going into this book really expecting it to wow or surprise you in terms of its plot or its twists or how it's written or whatever deeper meaning you're hoping will be inside of here, like this book is not for you. You're not going to like it. Half of this book's appeal, in my opinion, is nostalgia value for people who grew up enjoying a lot of the stories that this book takes inspiration from and how it's written. Because everything that I said yesterday when I was cooking about this book's exposition and the way that the tone is handled in comparison to how dark the world is, like it's, it all stays true the entire book. It never really gets better in that way. And if you're looking for like a gritty once in a lifetime book, like this is not that. I'm so serious. Look somewhere else. The best way I can describe how to set your expectations is that in terms of books with similar plot devices, the poppy war comparison 
person is bad. It is nothing tonally at all like that book whatsoever, other than having an academy inside them. And the Divergent comparison is excellent. Like, it is written in a way where the character voice is honestly a more tolerable and likable Triss, and it has a similar level of, like, chaos and I'm so boy crazy, even in the face of, like, bonkers situations as the Divergent trilogy did. I think that's a much better comparison for the kinds of readers who are going to overlap and actually enjoy this book versus the kinds of readers who are going to be going in with incorrect expectations and come out wondering what the fuck book talk is doing. And with that said, if you really like near first person, if you're a YA reader, if you have a soft spot for fanfiction and tropes, and you read a lot of romance, and you think that not everything has to be that serious to be enjoyable, I really believe that you're going to absolutely love this. This is definitely the book for you, I think. It'll live up to the hype if you're that kind of reader. But this book is what I would describe as a hard candy fantasy novel, where the world is gritty enough to be compelling and to lend itself to some kind of fun reveals and plot moments, and to have some interesting systems at play in the background to keep up the intrigue, but the tone and the events of the book are just pure fun, and they're not trying to disguise themselves as something that they are not. Violet has a lot more agency in this than other protagonists in similar books, and she's really direct, which I respect a lot, and I like the dynamic of her main relationship, even though I have some critiques of how it kind of plays out, especially in the back half of the book. And I think that the events of the book are fun, even when they veer into Violet being not like other girls, but I'm not really one to care if I'm rooting for the characters and the actual events of what is happening are cool. And what was happening was definitely cool, so that gets kind of a pass for me. Overall, I think I'm gonna give this book somewhere in the 3.5 to 4 star range. If you already like romanticy, you should read this book. You're gonna love it, I'm almost certain. But it's not gonna do anything new or convert you if you don't already fuck with that genre, so don't read it if you read the back of the book and you're worried that it's not for you. It's not going to change your mind. It's not like reinventing the wheel just because it's popular. Like, you are setting yourself up to fail. Anyways, with all of that said, let's talk in depth with spoilers. Leave now if you're afraid of being spoiled. I'm not gonna protect you. You have three seconds. Three, two, one. Are you gone? Hey sis, it's been a while since I saw your face. I know faking my death sent our dad into a deep depression that ultimately killed him and he was your only conduit to peace in this world, but I had my reasons, okay? <laughs> I had to. I, I could not. Okay, I have a lot of thoughts. First off, I wanted a record that I did like this book. I had a great time reading it. It had like a lot of nostalgic value for me, which is the clearest pathway into my heart. And a lot of the thoughts I'm about to be sharing are not going to be positive, but that's because most of my enjoyment in this book can be condensed very simply down to I love the vibes, I fuck with dragons, and I had fun reading this. And for me, that's enough sometimes to give something that is not trying to be that serious a four star ranking. Before I say anything critical about your darling, I just want to say that it's okay to like things that are not of pristine quality. If only you bitch is new. The amount of shoujo manga that I read in the basement of my library growing up, you would understand that I'm an expert in eating up content that is objectively ridiculous. I could have a high capacity for fun and a strong radar for bullshit at the same time, okay? Those things can coexist. And my review of this book would just be remiss if we did not unpack some of the ridiculous nonsense going on in the story. And there's a lot. So let's talk characters. Violet is, all at the same time, a great protagonist, a manic pixie dream girl, and the horniest motherfucker ever to be alive on this world. Throughout the story, a lot of people doubt her because of her size and her constitution, and she's really steadfast the entire time that she is strong, which is cool. She's really decisive, and she has concrete personality traits, so she's not just a reader insert, in my opinion, which is a difficult thing to accomplish in a genre like this successfully. And I said earlier that I didn't care about this, and I don't really, but it's still worth mentioning that Violet, unlike other girls, is just freakishly competent at literally everything that matters in this book. Oftentimes, almost instantly, Violet bonds with not one, but two dragons, the first in history to ever do such a thing, and both of these dragons happen to be the rarest dragons that she could have possibly bonded with. She gets from those dragons not one, but two cool powers that are either once in a generation rare or never before seen at all. And they're both like freakishly powerful. Characters in this book have to ground themselves and their bond with their dragon and sometimes shield themselves from their dragon's emotional influence. And she masters the ability to do both of those things like instantly to the point where Zayden, who previous to her was the most competent person in the academy, is like, that took me weeks. How did you do that instantly? That's so crazy. You're so cool and sexy and smart. She just happens to know how to poison everybody. First try, apparently, just through reading a book and never gets caught ever when she sneaks around, which is something that she's implied to do regularly, except occasionally by Zayden to boost forward the narrative of their relationship, not because she's bad at it or whatever. And she grew up in an archive, apparently, in training to be a scribe, not a warrior, but somehow she's gained the ability to throw daggers so accurately that she can nick someone's ear as a threat. Like, when did she learn how to do that thing that not even all of these people who have been training to be writers since they were born know how to do? And you know, I am all for things that move the plot in interesting directions, but all of those things at once and for one girl, it was, it was just 
is a lot. And it's worth mentioning here, I think, that Violet has an unnamed chronic illness that is unnamed in the book, but makes her very fragile physically compared to all of the other people in her academy. So narratively, I get it. Like, she's making up for that weakness by being supernaturally gifted at everything else that she does to prove to the reader that there is more than one kind of strength. But that's just still a lot of things to be good at. It is one of many things about this book that is fun to read when it's happening, but when you think about it for longer than two seconds, you're like, oh, Okay. My second beef with Violet is that she is constantly horny, literally all of the time, which like we stand a sexually liberated woman, but I am so for real, she is always thinking about how hot Zayden is. All of the time, like from when she meets him at the very beginning to when they hate each other and are sparring to when they become unlikely allies, all the way to when he betrays her kind of at the bitter end of this book. Even when she is faced with death or she's in like the middle of a war scene, she's constantly thinking about how sexy he is. Three minutes away from the initial trial that your mother and sister and literally everybody around you is sure will lead to your imminent death. He's the most exquisite man I've ever seen. Flaming hot, scorching hot, gets you into trouble and you like it level of hot. Trying to argue your way out of a legal technicality so you don't get killed on the spot for dishonor. His eyes flare and I don't miss the hint of a smirk on that infuriatingly decadent mouth of his. It should be against the codex to look that good and be so ruthless. <laughs> just found out that you're gonna be actively hunted for sport because you're physically weak and all of the unbound cadets think that they can just kill you and steal your super powerful dragon? My gaze snaps to Zayden and my chest tightens. So freaking beautiful. Apparently my body doesn't care that he's as dangerous as they come in the quadrant because heat rushes through my veins, flushing my skin. My whole head tingles. <laughs> Gods, is there any part of my body that doesn't physically react to the sight of him? Awaiting a fatal war game that starts in 20 minutes and will kill statistically 10% of your close friends? The top button of his flight jacket is undone, and I grip the fabric and tug him toward me. At what point is this constant craving for him going to be assuaged? I've had him multiple times in the past 24 hours, and could still go another round. Or three. Is it wrong to wish we'd had time to finish? Yes, yes, that's wrong. Your friends are going to die. Falling off your dragon, lethally poisoned, and about to die? Zayden pulls the venom from the wyvern's back and yanks him downward, right into the dagger he holds into his outstretched hand. Damn. Sometimes I forget just how beautifully lethal he is. And that is truly only a fraction of the content on this topic that we receive throughout this book. It is just one of those things that you are either going to be able to look past or it's just going to crater your enjoyment. This woman just constantly wants ass all of the time in her internal monologues. And you as a reader, you're just going to have to decide whether you're okay with that. She looks at this man and she has the same two thoughts every time. She's like, wow, I hate you. You're so dangerous. You're so awful. Man, he's really sexy though. Sexy, beautiful, awesome, sexy. Wow. It is insane. I think that that's why I liked this book most when she was flying or fighting some one, or trying to survive her imminent death, or just doing anything where the rest of her personality has a chance to shine because she's not busy thinking about how horny she is for Zayden. Because like for example, the threshing, which is the ceremony where they basically release all of the cadets into the wilds and are like, kill each other or find dragons and moth with them. Good luck out there. Do whatever you want. We won't stop you. That's a cool part of this book. And I think it's because she's busy trying to survive and bonding with her dragons and she doesn't have the chance to be horny. So it lets like the rest of her personality shine through. At the end of the day, I still liked her as a character, but it was a lot. It was a lot, and I'm not going to pretend that it wasn't. Zayden, meanwhile, in my opinion, is a pretty interesting character. I don't have a lot to say about him. I mean, in many ways, he's just the stereotypical dark-haired male lead, but a lot of that is just based, again, on Violet's, like, endlessly horny internal monologue, as she is thinking about him all the time and watching his actions through that lens. Because the reveals of this book and how it all kind of tied together into him being this very selfless, unofficial leader of all of the children of the Rebellion, and the kind of guy who is willing to sacrifice his life for all of them to make sure that they're able to survive, I thought it was nice. I like me a nice, spiky, caring man. Man, okay, and he has cool powers like he can control shadows. That's dope I will say one caveat I went into this book expecting enemies to lovers and while they are set up background wise as enemies really well I mean her mom killed his dad and his dad killed her brother or so you think I never really got more than mild dislike And I've been warned about you because you might kill me even though you clearly don't intend to to reluctant allies to lovers So keep that in mind because I didn't really ever buy that they hated each other But I still did really enjoy their dynamic and how Zayden consistently pushed Violet to have the skills to defend herself and the belief in her own abilities. I thought that that was very cool and a great juxtaposition to Dane, who I hated. Off the jump, his entire personality is just either having absolutely no faith in Violet and wanting to go against her wishes and or being a narc. Like even when she's getting all of the protagonist magical powers beyond comprehension and she can literally shoot lightning at people. He's still like, I don't know, queen, maybe you should stay inside. I heard it's really dangerous out there. I don't want you getting crumpled. This is just me being your bestie. This is me looking out for you. That's what good guys do. I'll say it, he was giving Redditor. Actually, no, it's worse than that. He was giving Reddit mod. It's just like, I don't know, even when he's not being an overprotective piece of garbage, he's being a narc. Like, he is the one who ends up unexpectedly selling out Violet and Zayden and all of the rebellion people. Because he has this power to 
to touch someone's face and read their memories and it turns out that he's been doing this to Violet the entire book like without her consent and obviously that's annoying but like you know what I already hated him I already got rancid vibes from this man so it really did not change my opinion it just made me think yeah Dane would do that. And I just really wish this character and his background was more fleshed out because I feel like there could have been something there. Why does he feel so attached to this system that he would never consider breaking a single rule? Why is he actually willing to die for it and also betray his best friend who he's apparently in love with? Is there something in his past that would explain why he behaves the way that he does? We don't even get in here like the implication of the beginning of an answer to any of those questions. And because whenever he's in a scene, he just keeps saying the same shit over and over again. He just got so annoying to me so quickly. And I don't know, I did have a lot of respect for how how Violet did not tolerate that behavior. Like it was very quickly clear that he was not a legitimate love interest because he didn't believe in her, which I respected a lot. Like a weaker author might have tried to baby the protagonist in order to preserve the allure of, ooh, who's she gonna choose for as long as possible? And there was none of that here because Dane was such a little baby. So at least there's that. Plot wise, I thought the book again was kind of basic. Like it's not reinventing the wheel. It is a magical story set in a deadly academy that follows an underdog who ends up accidentally becoming the most powerful person there and discovers that there are secrets that the government is keeping and not sharing with the public. You have read that book before. You've probably read 10 of those books before. And there are definitely some bits in the premise and the world building that just do not make sense to me whatsoever. Like the stakes in this world are apparently really high. I mean, they've been at war for about 600 years per Violet saying a bunch of facts at the beginning of this book as she crossed the parapet. And they always need more people to fight in this war to the point where they're just conscripting people all of the time. But they have just embraced killing off their students, apparently, seemingly for no reason. Like how about instead of someone just dying if they can't cut it as a dragon rider, you drafted them into a different part of the military and they could be a healer or a scribe or an infantry person of which I'm sure you're losing constantly like thousands of all of the time. You know, it just feels like there's options for a kingdom that is literally starving for troops and off the jump, if you think for longer than two seconds, it's just a little bit weird how things work up there to raise those stakes so high in the academy. And I cannot mention this because it's like a major cornerstone of the book that you accept as the reader that Violet can be killed at any time at any point in this academy. Almost for no reason at all because she's just at a place where it is normal that that happens and it just doesn't pass the smell test for me. It's just weird. Maybe there's a deeper reason for why they kill people that they could just be training elsewhere to replenish their dying troops, but we did not get even the hints of rationale for that in this book, so I doubt it. But look, from the beginning, basically, I knew as a result of that, that this was a book that was to be enjoyed for its own sake and not as something to be thought about too deeply and critically analyzed and torn apart. Like, that's just not the point of this, obviously, and it's not trying to be that. And to its credit, no matter how arbitrary the constraints of the story seem to be, if you're able to accept them, I do think that the actual arc of the events of this story within the world that we're given is really well executed. I'm not embarrassed to admit that I really enjoy the fantasy trope where the protagonist is like this loyal member of a system only to discover that that system is really corrupt and war is bad and everything is awful. You know, like it's cliche, but a lot of my favorite books growing up had that trope, so I have a big soft spot for it. And I think that I liked a lot of this book for that reason. It's very propulsively written through that kind of arc. And also I thought that everything with the dragons and that part of the world, once it was properly introduced around like 40% or so of the way into the book, was really interesting. I was really for that. I was really into the story at that point. I loved both of her dragons, Taryn, who's this like curmudgeon -y, massive black ultra powerful dragon and Andarna who is this little yellow kind of toothless energy baby dragon who's very sweet and endearing. I thought that they were both very tangible presences in the book and I love their personalities. And I was like actually hyped when she was riding Taryn for the first time after defending Andarna. Hate on everything else you want in this book okay but if you didn't like that scene in that moment in the story you hate fun all right you don't like joy. You're telling me that you're too pseudo intellectual to enjoy a girl riding a dragon for the first time up in the air against all odds. I don't know. I really enjoyed that part of the book. It was probably my favorite singular moment in the story. I also liked in the background the way that accommodations were handled for Violet's disability, especially with Taryn and things that just made it physically easier for her to ride him. I thought it was really sweet and just great representation that didn't like weaken her character at all. So that was cool. Addendum, I also thought it was really fun how the way that forced proximity was forced between Zayden and um, Violet was that their dragons are love and can't spend too long away from each other. I don't know, man. Like that's absurd, but I just think that's such a great way to make them be together. I don't know. I was kicking my feet up in the air at that point. Point, okay, I was bought in. I was buckled. But with that, unfortunately, what really dragged for me, and I'm so sad, by the way, that this is true, but I just wasn't that big of a fan of how the romance was handled towards the end of this book. Again, initially, I really liked it. I enjoyed all of the scenes that they were having together and kind of the alliance that they formed that neither of them really wanted, but both of them absolutely needed in order to continue to survive at the academy. I don't know. I really enjoyed the tension. There's a scene where, I shit you not, their dragons start fucking, and the two of them can tell through their telepathy because the dragon's emotions can 
leak through or whatever when they're not controlling themselves. And obviously they're not controlling themselves if they're smashing. And anyways, it just makes Violet and Zayden like unbelievably horny <laughs> because they're dragons are. And they end up macking for the first time. And I'm not ashamed to admit that I even found that completely ridiculous happenstance to be hot and fun. Like I was even willing to put up with this man saying, babe, you have such touchable skin. I was out here like, Riz, wow, which is ridiculous. But that just goes to show how bought in I was by that point in their relationship to their story. I was just having a lot of fun kind of watching them orbit each other. Will they, won't they, you know? But around 70% of the way through the book, they finally smash for the first time, which to its credit, it's a good scene. It's suitably hot. But after that, almost instantly, Violet's just like, I love you, actually. I would do anything for you. I would accept you at your weakest and your strongest and everything in between. Just like almost right away. And her horniness level goes from already quite high to out of orbit. And dude, I don't know, it just ruined it for me. It just went so intense suddenly it was giving soulmates like all of the tension between them was just gone and it just didn't feel to me like enough had happened yet between them to actually warrant that level of instant commitment it just made the delivery of something that ideally is this big wonderful moment really unsatisfying to me and apparently this series is supposed to have four more books so clearly the author had the time to just really build it up and give us some fireworks when they finally admit that they can't live without each other but making it happen so suddenly and also tying it directly to them sleeping together where afterwards the girl is like I'm in love with with you and the boy is not saying it back. I don't know, it was just unsatisfying and not like a super cool kind of cliche. I think I just like my leads a little bit more repressed than that. So yeah, plot was good mostly, but when it just veered really suddenly and intensely into romance, I don't know, it just it just weakened it for me. And I think that some girlies will be all about that and that's wonderful, I'm just not one of you at this time. Lastly, I just wanna highlight some of the dialogue between the characters in this book because it's possibly the most Wattpad thing about it. Like these characters say things sometimes that make me just think, mm, mm, Okay, you're a person. Fascinating, you look all frail and breakable, but you're really a Violet's little thing, aren't you? And then he goes on to call her Violence for the rest of the book instead of Violets because he is a male lead in a fantasy novel and that is what those people do. It's a lot. You look different. It's the leathers. Why? Is different bad? It's just different. Why, Dane Atos, you've seen me in swimwear, tunics, and even ball gowns. Are you telling me it's the leather that does it for you? Glad to see your Europe heart hasn't dulled your tongue, Vi. Oh. I can do quite a few things with my tongue. You'd be impressed. These are two besties who are reuniting. What What are they? That's just, just nobody says those things in that order. Certainly not at a reunion with your bestie who you haven't seen in a year. Like, what? Oh, and then Zayden crashes this trip that Dane is doing with Vi and like her entire squad. And they start arguing about the fact that he's there, of course. And some unnamed absolute legend just goes, do you boys just want to whip it out in measure? It would be faster. It's stuff like that that just gives Wattpad in a big way. And I'm tired of saying it's not. And I'm learning about myself that I have a truly enviable ability to just move on from things like that. This dialogue does not hurt me. It does not phase me. I am bulletproof. I was still able to have a good time reading this book even when it was at its absolute most cringe. Young women are superheroes, I swear to god. I just needed to share the battles that we fight with the world. But yeah, those are my thoughts. Overall, again, I liked this and the reading experience for me was great as somebody who is deeply nostalgic and really likes dragons and is really good at compartmentalizing any secondhand embarrassment that I might have felt throughout the book. It just doesn't always have to be that serious, you know? And I think that if you're looking for a really fun book to just pick up and wipe your brain, you'll probably enjoy this like I did. I think the hype it's getting is just just making people think that this is like some kind of revolutionary piece of fiction and it's just not but it is really fun so yeah I hope you enjoyed my more nuanced take on this book thank you for coming on this adventure with me please like comment subscribe all of that stuff and yeah I'll see you next week I don't have anything else to say bye